Welcome back to Vampire. For the main quest, we still need to find Sean Hampton at the East End docks and deal with them, whatever that means, kill them, convince them, something. But for this episode, I don't think I'm going to be focusing on the main quest. I want to do some stuff around the hospital. One of the things I want to do is cure some people. So there's at least a couple people here that I should be able to cure now that I've got a bunch of different types of cures. I also want to just talk with people that I haven't talked with before, see what's going on. I'm curious what's going on with this body here. Maybe Ashbury wants to talk about it? Oh, Jonathan. I cannot believe my eyes. Poor woman. Butchered by some savage scal. Hey, you haven't talked to that person, right? I'm pretty sure that person is that super old patient. The, the oldest patient at the hospital. The one who's a complete asshole. If it isn't them, then I apologize for desecrating their memory. But if it is them, then fuck them. I really don't care about them at all. Can we share this meal? <laughs> that is so darkly humorous. Would you care to partake in this meal with me? Jonathan, how could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent. For there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. Oh, right. Ascalon. Yes, we've encountered a lot of interesting things. I mean, we discovered holy symbols and their effect upon us a little while ago. But specifically in the last episode, we read that note about holy symbols and faith and about how there's a special type of metal that should be able to, at least legend or whatever says that it should be uh, very powerful against vampires. And we met that weird blood vision, which may or may not be Ascalon. And we met that vampire who was an agent of Ascalon who threatened us. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel, stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was bigger than a man. Huge, in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you but rather outdoing his master's bidding. What is Ascalon? The Ascalon Club are the most powerful vampires in Britain and exert tremendous influence. Take my advice and stay well away. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. Have you embraced this woman, like the other patient, this Mr. Renfield? Her name was Amelia. And no, I did not kill her. I vowed a very long time ago that I would never take another life, unless they ask. Oh. Okay, maybe I did judge them too quickly then, if that's true. I knew they uh, killed the dying before they were actually dead. I just assumed it was without their consent, but if they asked for it, then that changes things. Is there sufficient vitality in the blood of the sick and dying patients? Yes, Jonathan. The hunger gnaws at me every waking hour. Frankly, I'm starving. Temptation surrounds us. Rich, vital. How can you resist? Over the years, any pleasure I once gleaned from feeding is long gone. I drink for sustenance. And though I still thirst for more, I restrain myself. Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon. Ah, here's one of the people I can help. Clay Cox. Who has anemia. Oh, they're taking a piss. I don't see any urine. I think that was a fake piss. Good evening, Mr. Cox. Dr. Reed! Still working at night, I see. I like that. 
And why is that? People who don't sleep at night always seem more alive to me. More interesting, one way or another. Isn't this this, this ass the asshole that we had to memorize as part of the like tutorial? Yeah, they're worth very little. You have extremely low blood quality, Clay Cox. But I'll help you anyway. You're lucky to be this fly. Consider yourself lucky. I'm treating all of my patients equally. But don't push your luck. Don't play the innocent with me. I'm sure you have good reasons to act this way. And also weaknesses that can be exploited. Wow, maybe I should eat them, huh? I mean, I should probably wait for them to recover. I assume their blood quality goes up even further if I wait a day after they're recovering. I'm not sure. I haven't actually checked that, but I can't see what else it would mean. That is a creaky thing, whatever I'm hearing in the background. What is that? Dear God. What is that? Is it this? <laughs> is it the entrance to the... Well, it's not the entrance to the sewers. Ah, whatever. Anyway, uh, I... I mean, I don't like them, I don't really want to talk with them, but I guess I will? Do you ever think about that poor fellow I saw you push in the water? The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. It still fucking hurts. Boss, it cut me good. What did he want? Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor asshole thought it would be easy to return the favor. Oh my god, they made this guy so easy to kill. I'm so gonna kill him. I know I'm taking the bait because the game obviously wants me to. And you're probably meant to kill this person like right at the beginning of the game since they're so low level. But I'm still gonna do it. You're a monster, Mr. Cox. An ungrateful and disgusting man. I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. How is your hospitalization going, Mr. Cox? This is a shitty place with shitty stuff. Alright, go fuck yourself then. What's that? I don't know. See if any hints pop up. What's good? What? How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? I know this city like the back of my hand, Doc. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. If blood and violence is all you understand, I'm sure it won't be long before you meet them, Mr. Cox. I ain't afraid of death. I don't hide who I am. I live my life honestly, which is more than I could say for most folks. And who are you, then? I'm the leader of the Wet Boot Boys. One day, I'll leave this shitty place and punch in the face all who thought I would not come back. Oh, you're the leader of the Wet Boot Boys? Don't say. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? All I know is I ain't letting anyone rip my throat out in my sleep. I found myself a nice play, Doc. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, there's a letter here. In this tent. I'm tired of your shit, Clay. What the fuck did you do? All the bloody docs are gossiping about how my husband has just got that stupid kid. How many times did I tell you to count to 20 before drawing your blade? How can we expect to do proper business and have people obey if you keep on killing everyone who dares cross you? Now rumor says some blokes from the dead's family are looking for you and one of them even swore to kill you. Don't come home tonight. I've seen strange men patrolling the streets. They may be some commie militia or something like that sent to arrest you. Go to a safe place for a few days. Maybe go to the hospital or Whitechapel. Make yourself useful for once by checking if any business could be settled over there. When the situation is calmer, I'll send a wet boot boy so that you know to come back. Edwina. They really are making it easy to kill you. Get back. <laughs> what can you tell me about your marriage, Clay? Marriage is the sweetest cage, they say. Well, I found myself locked in one with a wild animal. You mean your wife keeps you on your toes? No, I mean, we both have claws and we both love to bite. Am I right to assume your wife's letter pissed you off, Clay? I was so mad, I threw away the knife she got me when we got married. Your wife 
Gave you a knife as a wedding present. That knife has always been my lucky charm. If I'd had it in my hand when I got stabbed on that pier, I'd not have been wounded. Do you want it back? I don't need it here, but if you'd be kind enough to bring it to me, I'd be really grateful. A grateful Clay Cox? I might just find your knife and bring it back to you to see that happen. I can give you directions, but I'll be surprised if you manage to find it. My hideout isn't meant to be found easily. A lucky charm. I never would have taken you as the superstitious type. We all have our flaws, Doc. Mine's to have my weapon of choice for when the really dirty business comes around. I'll leave you for now, Miss. Please, I feel sick. Get over here now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sickness really comes in waves. But I'm not even sick, though. I've already treated them. Look, your medical checkup says recovering. See? You're not sick. Oh, they're already they're already worth a thousand XP. Hmm. Alright, uh, I guess we're doing this quest then. I mean I'm still gonna kill them, but I might as well get something out of it, right? So where is it? Jesus. Over there about 140 meters. Okay. Sure. Let's go. Oh, hold on. Just right down the stairs. Oswald Thatcher. I don't remember who they are, but they have a headache, so let's cure them. Hello again, Mr. Thatcher. Do you feel any better now? Yes. This neighborhood may stink of dog shit and reek of piss, but to me it smells like the purest mountain air. I don't remember you at all. Who are you? Do you need me? Don't get me- I'm certain you have your reasons. But let me assure you, I'm not like other doctors you may have consulted with. Uh, it is true. You risked your life to save me, after all. I did? It would be impolite to refuse your counsel. I really don't remember them. Oh, this is the... Right, this is the person that I rescued from the sewers. I let them out of the cage. They had a... Yeah, they were stuck in a cage and they had a couple skulls outside. Like, trying to beat down the door. Right. Okay. Well, let's have a conversation. Mr. Thatcher, do you have a job? No. Since I came back from the war, I spent most of my time and energy just trying to forget. I understand what you mean. I was a soldier too. No. Nobody can truly understand what I've gone through. Okay. How can you be so sure? We were both in the war. Why were you locked in that sewer? What happened? I went by the canal after an argument with a friend. Got chased by these fucking wankers and had to barricade myself in, despite my claustrophobia. Why did you run? What was the reason for your argument? Newton wanted me to go to a hospital, but I can't stand being closed in. It makes me feel like I'm suffocating. Tell me about your claustrophobia. Has anyone given you an official diagnosis? <sighs> That's what the bloody doctors said. But I don't want to go to a hospital to get checked again. I'll deal with it my own way. Oswald, why did you not go to the Pembroke Hospital to seek medical help? I don't trust doctors. All they care about was their careers and processes. I won't be locked in any room again by anyone. Your fear of being trapped is not going to go away by itself. You need professional help. I've seen enough butchers in white coats to last a lifetime. Hospitals reek of chemicals and death. What I need is fresh air. What did they go through in the war? Sounds like they were taken prisoner? Tortured, maybe? Do you want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher? No, I really don't. An irrational fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. When I rescued you, you expressed joy at seeing the sky again. So I'm inclined to believe you were trapped or buried somehow. Maybe during a shelling. Jeez, you're good, Doc. You're really good. Go on, please. Tell me more about it. Newton and I were trapped in a circulation tunnel after an artillery attack. 
We were buried alive for several days without ever knowing if we'd be found. Damn. Oswald, tell me about what happened when you were buried in that tunnel with Newton. It was more than dark. It was black as pitch. Hours seemed like days, and days like months. Oh, the terror, the shameful thoughts. Lord have mercy. Shameful thoughts? Tell me about them. At some point, I don't remember which day, but when I thought we'd never be rescued, that this would be our end, I thought, I thought about, I thought about... <laughs> say it, Mr. Thatcher. If you ever want to heal, you have to say it. Yeah, I thought about what I could do to survive, just for a few more days. I thought about killing Newton, killing and eating him. The man I fucking love. What you endured was terrifying. It would have completely destroyed weaker men. It did not destroy Newton. The man I love sounds like... gay? Gay relationship? Tell me about your true feelings for Newton. I love him. I'm not ashamed to say it. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. I can't imagine life without him. Okay, we gotta repair this relationship. I admire your honesty. It takes courage to stand up to society. The world needs people like you to create change. Courage is what we needed in the trenches, looking death in the face every day. I speak plain, I speak my mind. Have you always been this straightforward? All I know is, before you saved me by the sewer, my only regret was I wouldn't be able to hold or kiss Newton again. I love him, that's all. Tell me, I... I think that's it for now. Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. <laughs> God, I was worried if they were about to walk into the water. They certainly tried. Alright, so I need to find Newton. I don't know where they are. Yeah, I've got some a couple of hints, but if I want to go any further with this, I need to find him. No idea where they are. Clay Cox's hideout should be somewhere over here. Oh, um, I equipped my new ability, by the way, the Shadow Mist. I put that in place of the shield since I didn't really use that that much. It looks like this. <laughs> a really good ability. I like it. Wait, is this it? Is this what... If it's just there, this is where Clay said that, like, good luck finding it, my hideout's super well hidden. Well hidden? It's just along the canal, and there isn't even a locked door protecting it. What the hell are you talking about? Okay. A large, beautiful knife with a name engraved on the blade. This must be Clay Cox's knife. A fine blade. No wonder he wants it back. Probably already seen this poster. King Country needs you join the something something. It's all ripped up. I wonder, do I, like, can I recycle it if I wanted to? Or is it a quest item? Uh, yeah, it's listed under quest items. I'm just thinking, if I'm gonna kill Clay Cox anyway, should I give it back and then kill them, or kill them and then keep it or something? I guess I'll give it back, because I don't think I can do anything with quest items other than give it back. Wait a minute. Newton Blight is just right there. 
Oh. Huh. I, I thought they'd be somewhere far away. They're just... <laughs> they had an argument, and now they're just hanging out kind of around each other. Alright, well, I'll go speak with them in a minute. I have found a gift from your wife. In that case, you'll be properly rewarded, Doc. Clay Cox is a man of his word. I hope that won't make me an accomplice to your future crimes. Who knows what I might do now I feel invincible again. 20 plus 20 shillings? I wonder why they didn't just give me 40. Well, they're still recovering, but they're at 1,000 XP. Is it time? I think it's time. Don't look, nurse. Wait, what? I can't mesmerize them anymore. Apparently I don't know how mesmerizing works. Okay then, let's go speak with Newton. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed of the Pembroke Hospital. May I be of assistance? Dr. Reed. So it's you who saved my friend Oswald. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And you are? Newton Blight. Oswald and I recently returned from the war. Why do you stay here now that Mr. Thatcher's back? It's complicated. Since the war, Oswald's been really nervous with the idea of entering any hospital. And me. I've got my own issues. Can you speak about them? Rats, sir. Even seeing one, they turn me. Just want to run. It's that fear that stopped me from going after Oswald when he left. What can you tell me about the war, Mr. Blight? If you want to speak about it, of course. War was... Well, you know, sir. The stench of death everywhere. Your mates lying bleeding in the mud. Just praying to make it through and get home. Bloody nightmare. I fought in France, too. I served as a field surgeon. But it was not uncommon to repel an assault, especially at night. Yeah. The first time I was wounded, I had to protect the infirmary from hostiles. Twice. Did you know Oswald Thatcher before the war? No. We met in the battlefield. I think we were in the same boat to France. We've stuck together ever since. You are always welcome at the Pembroke Hospital. As a former officer, I'll be honored to welcome a fellow veteran. I'm not giving up on bringing Oswald back to the hospital. I just need to convince him that he needs some help. Perhaps he needs to reach that decision by himself. Could you speak to him? He doesn't usually listen to doctors, but perhaps because you've been through it, you can talk him round. How do you feel about Oswald Thatcher? You are more than friends, aren't you? I, I love him. I love Oswald. We knew we wouldn't survive the war without each other. But I am terrified, Doctor. What frightens you so much? What people find out? Oswald says I'm ashamed, but it ain't that. It's more, well... You know... I never thought I'd love a man. Enjoy your love. And enjoy life as long as you can, Mr. Blight. Don't let anyone tell you who you should love or how you should love them. I appreciate your kind words, sir. But it ain't that easy. It's all so new to me. You and Oswald were buried alive during the war. Tell me about it. Yeah. It was last summer. A shell hit our trench and we were buried for a week. How did you survive for a week? Luckily for us, there were rations and water in the tunnel. It was an outpost, see. Since then, Oswald's not keen on being inside for too long. Oswald seemed far more traumatized than you by the event. It wasn't the first time it happened to me. But surviving it again gave me strength. You believe that? 
What caused your phobia of rats, Newton? It happened last year following an artillery attack. I was trapped for two days in a hole under two dead soldiers. And there were rats. Go on. They started eating me as soon as I dozed. Hmm. Gnawing at my ears, my fingers, lips. Ugh. I couldn't move. I couldn't call for help. I see. No, you don't. You have no idea what it is to wake up buried under bodies. Fucking vermin eating your flesh. Oswald, he found me and saved me. God, it sounds so freaking horrible. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Good e evening. Tell me about your true feelings for Newton. I love him. I'm not ashamed to Wait, say Wait, we already did this. Oh, it's because I haven't said this. Why should you be ashamed? I'm not, I said. But Newton sees it differently. Newton is conflicted about his feelings towards you. Would you like to talk about it, Oswald? It makes me sad and angry. It feels like the beautiful thing we have is somehow tainted. It hurts to see him so lost. His love for you is genuine. I'm certain he wasn't lying to me when he expressed his feelings for you. Newton still has to accept it, knowing he'll be seen as a queer, a fairy, less than a man in those simple-minded bigot's eyes. Though he's more of a man than they'll ever be, so fuck them all. Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. Is there anything more I can do there, or is that... No, I think that's everything. Like, that's all their hints. Three of them done there, four of them done there, and Oswald is recovering. It's kind of... It's kind of strange. It feels... odd. That... I guess the, uh, like... The gameplay impetus for talking with those people is basically to make their blood quality go up so you can feed from them, right? But that's not actually what I'm doing with the vast majority of people, because I'm not going to eat anybody unless they're a horrible person like Lake Ox. God, I can't wait to eat you. So, like, con conversing with these people, it's... It feels strangely gamey, because I'm using my mesmerize skill during the conversation to, you know, tell me more about this. Getting into their heads. So it feels like the game is saying, okay, you should eat them. Because you're like, forcing them to talk about their traumas, which is weird, but I guess I'm just being helpful. I'm just doing it a very strangely vampiric way. But, like, I reached the end of this conversation. I finished talking with them, and I feel like there's supposed to be a quest or something, right? Like, there should be some sort of a climax to the whole thing after talking with both of these people and doing all the hints, but there isn't. I guess the climax is supposed to be, hey, you can now feed from them and they're worth a lot of XP, but I'm not going to do that. So it just feels... Uh, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it feels... odd. Not that, like, I have to be rewarded for talking with these people. I mean, they're interesting characters and I like talking with them. But it just feels a little bit strange. Looks like you don't have to wait another day to mesmerize them. You just gotta wait a little bit of time. And I looked it up online because I entirely forgot how to do it. You need to follow the black smoke. I didn't notice that before. I'm glad no one finds this suspicious. Yes. Come to the storeroom. Killed, extorted, stole. Now I die. Fuck it. I live the way I wanted. Oh, that's interesting. So, each time you embrace somebody, you get kind of an ending message where they. So it's almost like they're seeing their own death and commenting on it. How they feel about dying. Ooh, there's a bunch of supplies back here. Yeah, I don't feel bad about doing that at all. They were a piece of shit. I love the creepy music too. 
Let's take a look at that hatchet. Probably not too good because they are a very low level character. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Clay's hatchet. Actually, maybe that is good. So compared to the used hatchet. Uh, does more damage from 65 to 72. Attack speed is the same. Stamina is the same. Yeah, so I think it's basically just a slightly better hatchet. Good and solid hatchet, often found on boats. This one belonged to Clay Cox and has been customized to be of better use in a fight. Yeah, so a slightly upgraded hatchet. <laughs> I still like my hacksaw, though. It's still ridiculous. <laughs> Freaking surgeon vampire with a hacksaw. Or not, not a surgeon, I'm a blood specialist. But I mean, I can do surgery, of course. Just trying to buy some stuff from Milton, and you know what? Let's buy their shotgun. I've got 482 shillings. It's 315, and it is really good. Keep in mind, that's just at level 1, right? Or level... Oh, it's... Yeah, so it's been upgraded once by default, I guess. But still, I'm pretty sure that's significantly more damage than the normal shotgun. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah, the common Lupara does 220 damage at level 2, and Milton Shotgun does 296 damage at level 2. That's a huge increase. Uh, Stat-wise, reload time 15, reload time 10. Okay, so it takes a bit more time to reload. Still totally worth it, though, I think. I was just smashing through some dialogue with Pippa Hawkins, and I unlocked a new hint for Milton Hooks. Something about them being mediocre. Sounds really insulting, but let's do it. Why do you have such a mediocre reputation among your colleagues, Milton? Fuck them. Nobody knows the horrors I've seen since working here. This city was sick long before the epidemic, Dr. Reed. I know it's a difficult task, but correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the job you are paid to do? I've seen babies left to die while their brothers were properly fed. Underage girls and boys sold to all manner of perverts. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. We lack words. So excuse me if I don't look on the bright side of life. Yeah, Jonathan, jeez. Jonathan really is a dick sometimes. I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to get to know some of the people that I've never spoken with inside of the hospital. Oh, I got, I think, a doctor there, and a doctor there, and I think that's a patient over there that I've never spoken with. So, I'll be back soon.